while still on the World Economic Forum, many now say, if you're not in Africa, you're not in business. And with us on Global Business Report, is an expert in Africa and indeed on the global economic issues, Elsie Kanza, head of Africa at the World Economic Forum. You're welcome to Global Business Report at this time. Uh, now, there are still many doubters on climate change in Africa. They say poverty, unemployment, and lack of infrastructure are more serious risks. What's your take on this? Uh, that's a very good point. First of all, thanks for having me uh, on your program. Um, according to the Global Risks Report, this, this is a survey of our executives um, and their assessment of what they see as top risks in Africa. The number one risk was actually un underemployment and unemployment, and particularly in the context of youth. Uh, to clarify, I don't think this means that climate uh, as, and, and climate change is not real. As you've seen in the past year, we've experienced devastating floods in southern parts of Africa and devastating uh, famine uh, in other parts of Africa. Uh, however, in the general scheme of things, uh, there's a general consensus that the biggest crisis that Africa is facing right now is that of youth unemployment. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the Africa Free Trade Continental Pact because it, it is moving forward. How can we assess progress? It is making also at a time when Nigeria has decided to close its borders for months now. Uh, in, on a basis of process, uh, the biggest uh, milestone last year was to get countries to agree that this is the way forward for the continent, uh, which is very exciting for all of us that are from the region as well as globally, because in effect, uh, once this aspiration is achieved, it would make Africa the biggest single market in the world. Uh, the next key milestone is what we're looking forward to this year, which is to begin to operationalize uh, the African free trade, uh, continental free trade area. And we are very uh, proud and, and honored as the World Economic Forum to have been recognized as a key partner in helping to operationalize uh, the AFCFTA. As you may appreciate, the first phase mainly involved negotiations between governments and policymakers, trade experts. But when it comes to operationalization, this is where we need to bring in business, particularly small business, as well as larger businesses. And we're well placed to facilitate this in partnership with the government. And in the larger scheme of things, uh, Africa is seen to be more attractive for many reasons as the rest of the world recalibrates their trade relationships. In your experience, Elsie, has Africa improved its business environment or is the world slightly less fuzzy? And what can improve? Well, the sad reality is that we are still, as a continent, lagging behind the rest of the world in terms of the competitiveness of our uh, environment uh, when it comes to doing business. This is a great uh, pity because uh, when we assess, so there's a global assessment that's been done of entrepreneurialism uh, around the world, and Africans are the most entrepreneurial. However, most enterprises fail, and a big part of this is, is the environment. Uh, with respect to the increased trade interest in Africa uh, over the past two years, uh, the Africa team at the forum has held conversations globally and in the region about uh, what we term the new scramble for Africa. And the big concern being that we're still trying to figure out the spaghetti bowl of the uh, sub-regional trade agreements that we have, which, which haven't fully lived up to their promise. And now we're getting all this uh, interest from the rest of the world when we're still trying to get our act together. So our main uh, concern is to see how we can support our leaders uh, to determine an Africa position, be it within the region where intra-Africa trade still lags behind other major trade blocks in the world, as well as with respect to trade between Africa and the rest of the world, so that we can really start to rise to our potential. Interesting spaghetti bowl, Elsie, and I want to talk further on that point because uh, we just had the UK African Summit uh, in London. We'll probably have a France Africa Summit and more. Is this model of summits and conferences working for the continent? 
Uh, quite frankly, in, in my opinion, it's a major distraction. Uh, it would be great if we could have uh, other countries from the rest of the world engage with countries within Africa, as opposed to having a, an entire continent uh, engage with single countries around the world multiple times around the year. You know, when do our leaders have time to work? It's great to meet and to talk and align on positions, but at the end of the day, we need to execute. And right now, the biggest concern uh, that we've been hearing over the last year and, and really should be the call to action in 2020 and the rest of this decade is it's enough talk. It's, it's, it's time for action. Let's execute on what we've already agreed upon. Let's see where we land and then let's build on that. But we're talking too much and it's taking up too much of our time and, and we have too much to lose to keep doing this. Well, I don't know how the African leaders will agree with you on that, but let's talk about implementation. And in, in looking at that, you cannot exclude governance and corruption, and they are, they are linked. No discussion can be held without these areas. So how do you see Africa making progress in these areas? Many have said it remains business as usual. Well, talking about the African Union, we actually work with them very closely in terms of seeing how we can advance uh, and accelerate progress uh, on continental initiatives, uh, be it the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, be it the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa. Uh, so they will echo what I've said, and, and indeed it has been said before, even by their leadership, that we need to have some coherence so that our leaders, uh, our political leaders in particular, have time uh, to help their countries function instead of bouncing from meeting um, to meeting. With respect to uh, anti-corruption and improving governance, that's certainly improving. It remains a challenge. It's not just a challenge in Africa. It's a global challenge. Uh, very recently in Geneva, the World Economic Forum hosted uh, various experts and stakeholders from around the world to really come to grips with this issue. It looks like corruption is back on the rise uh, across the world. The good news is in Africa, we're hearing more and more success stories of how citizens are taking action. Uh, companies are starting to clamp down on corruption. You have leaders such as the President Botswana right now, who's a very active champion of the Parting Against Corruption initiative uh, that the Forum has, South Africa equally on board. So I'd say the, the, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, we still have a way to go, uh, but I'm certainly optimistic that there is a concern uh, and an alignment around zero tolerance for corruption. Fantastic, Elsie. Now let's talk about the presence of the continent in Davos. The two most important African nations by size, Nigeria and South Africa, are not represented by their heads of state or president. Uh, does this matter? Well, uh, we're very excited uh, looking at the year, uh, the theme of Africa at Davos uh, this year, and, and it's shaping our programming as well as the engagement of our key African stakeholders is Africa rising in a fractured world. There was a recent report that came out uh, in the general media that indicates that Africa will be growing faster than the global average growth rate. Uh, about seven of the fastest growing countries out of the 10 top uh, growth economies in the world are African. We continue to lead. And this is despite the challenges that our top economies in sub-Saharan Africa are facing, that is Nigeria and South Africa. Having said that, we will be represented by ministers from Nigeria, as well as ministers from South Africa. I'm very proud that we'll also have, for the first time, the president from the De Democratic Republic of Congo. We'll be accompanying President Botswana, um, the president of Ghana, the president of Senegal. The president of Ghana will be participating for his first time, too, as well as Deputy Prime Minister of Ethiopia. And more exciting, we're going to have eight uh, female ministers, women ministers, uh, from 11 countries that are represented from the government side. Overall, we have over 20 20 countries represented. Um, so Angola will be here, Zimbabwe will be here, Rwanda will be here, we have a Kenyan official, uh, we also have Mali as well participating. Thank you very much, Elza Kanza, head of Africa, the World Economic Forum in Davos.